Well, hello and welcome to the Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kohler, helping you cultivate a life you love. Today's show, we're going to focus on how to awaken deep self-love for profound healing. And I think that's one, one component that is so undervalued and underrated is, is self-love. It's, it's key to really having a wonderful life, and it affects every aspect of our lives. So it's a really important conversation, and I'm so excited to have my guest today who has such an incredible, profound story of, of healing. She battled and suffered with chronic illness for seven years and was able to heal herself in three months. And now she is on a mission to help others heal. And I think that's extraordinary because we can all learn so much from her incredible story. So I want to just jump into the conversation and say hello and welcome to Jenny Mannion, who is an author. She's a highly sought after intuitive and also self-love activator. And so we're going to activate you today to help you have that wonderful self-love that is so important and so needed. Jenny, it's an absolute pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much, Tanya. I'm honored to be here. Wonderful. Well, your story is, is truly amazing. And I want to, you know, get into to, to really, you know, the beginning of it. Um, so if we go to the the onset of your illnesses, what was your level of self-love, if any, at that time? It was pretty low. <laughs> it was pretty low. I was a new mom putting a lot of pressure on myself for that. I had a huge house that I couldn't possibly take care of. I felt like I wasn't showing up how I wanted to show up. And as a recovering perfectionist, that bar was pretty high. Mm, interesting. You know, it's it's perfectionism can, can really keep us stuck sometimes uh, and really put a lot of pressure at other times as well. Always that drive to, oh, it's got to be perfect. It can't can't uh, do what is it, it is in the moment because that holds you back. And it's interesting because I find that so many people uh, can relate to not having the level of self-love. And of course, you know, disease in the body leads to, you know, serious illnesses down the road if we don't take care of ourselves, And so that's why, you know, I really want to kind of get, you know, the, the thought process and sort of where you were in your life at that time. And it wasn't one, you know, illness that you were dealing with. You had multiple illnesses. So, you know, take us into that journey, if you will, so we can get an understanding of what, what you were actually going through. Absolutely. Well, I was waking up in chronic pain, uh, most of the pain was concentrated in my legs and being a dancer my whole life, that was really, really challenging to me to somehow, I mean, sometimes the pain got so bad that I was literally crawling down the stairs and didn't know whether I, it was safe to drive my kids. The self-talk was horrendous because you feel so badly for all the things that you can't do. And it definitely perpetuated it, you know, talking to myself so dis with such a disempowering voice, feeling, hearing from doctors, you will not be able to feel better. You're going to be in chronic pain for the rest of your life. You will be in a wheelchair at some point. So hearing all of those prognoses and being a woman in my 30s, it really did it made you feel made me feel disempowered. It made me feel less than. It made me feel like, what kind of life am I going to have? How am I going to show up as a mom? How am I going to show up as a daughter? Canceling a lot of events, not being able to show up. It was really, it was very painful. And the pain felt like I had the flu most days. It might have been concentrated in my legs, but it was all over body pain. Couldn't sleep because of the pain was so bad, so would wake up in more pain, and it just kind of snowballed. And when you keep going to the doctor for a diagnosis, you keep getting more diagnoses. So it started off with I had chronic mono, then it was that I had fibromyalgia, then it was a genetic blood disorder 
which they told me I was more likely to get a blood clot and promptly manifested one within three weeks of them telling me that and was in the hospital for a week. Mm. Mind is very powerful. And then the last one was Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, hypermobility. And that was the one that made them say that I would wind up in a wheelchair, that my legs would basically deteriorate and I would have a life of chronic pain, physical therapy, and pain pills. Wow. I mean, these are all very fearful and scary diagnoses, you know, independent of each other, but having them all together piled up, I think, you know, would certainly compound the the fear level. Um, and especially being a dancer as you were um, and, and the prognosis of potentially being in a wheelchair for the rest of your life, I can imagine, um, I can only imagine, you know, what that would have felt like. And, you know, your, your life changes in an in through those, you know, diagnoses. And it's really interesting that you said that you manifested that blood clot and the mind is absolutely so powerful, right? It's more powerful than the, than the fastest supercomputers on the planet. We have this technology, you know, within ourselves and, you know, it's so, so key to be able to tap into that. And so let's talk about that. Now, you, Obviously, at this point, you have an understanding of that you you manifested um, that blood clot. But at that time, did you have any awareness of that? Nope. <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's so interesting because the Internet is so wonderful and so not wonderful at the same time. Now you can get almost too much information. And that's what I was doing. I thought I was helping myself getting all this information about my diseases. But at the same time, you were giving yourself a list of more symptoms to manifest. <laughs> at this, so... I did not recognize. And I was in a very bad place when I was in the hospital for four days. And afterwards, my my ex-husband, now my husband, had to give me shots of heparin in the stomach for, I think it was two weeks after that. So it was very scary. And I did not recognize that, you know, maybe I thought it was coincidence or didn't even put it together that my brain was that... I, I certainly didn't feel powerful, so I probably didn't think I was powerful enough to create that. Yeah, it's amazing, you know, what we uh, perceive about ourselves and what we really, you know, hang on to, no matter what our circumstances are, you know, it's our mindset, you know, continues to to take us through that journey. And if we really want change, we need to be able to sort of reset the mindset and move forward in a way that is empowering. And I know for you, Jenny, you know, you are empowering other people to live that, that authentic, powerful life that feels good and comfortable and real and without the suffering. And I think so many of us believe, especially when you've been given a diagnosis, uh, you know, health challenges that you may be facing or what have you, people believe that that's it. I'm, I have, I'm resigned to this life. There's nothing that I can do to change that. So I would love to, to, to get inside your mind in terms of how you were able to get from that point of having all of these chronic illnesses to being able to, and obviously the fear, but being able to move from that to a point of being able to heal yourself. What was the catalyst for change for you? There were a couple of catalysts. The first was, you know, no, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, the first Always. was <laughs> meeting a girlfriend, and we met actually on St. Patrick's Day, and just fell in love with each other, and had boys about the same age. And me wanting to go for walks with her, I had not accepted pain pills as part of my life. I was like, if I go on to pain pills now, what am I going to, I'm going to be an addict. I'm going to need more and more. It's going to destroy my body. But when I met her, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a quarter of the dosage they're telling me and be able to go for a walk. And I think in those walks, I started to remember, hey, I'm more than a mom and a wife. I'm you know, who is Jenny, you know, and to have this friend reflect that back to me and actually see something in me that she loved. And women are, you know, so beautiful and wonderful to do that for each other. And friendships can bond us very deeply. Mm -hmm. I think that friendship put me in the right, and her name was Angela. So she was an angel literally from heaven. <laughs> and I think that put me in the right mindset. Another friend had told me about the movie, The Secret, that when that movie came out, I was like, you know what? I am open to that. I'd majored in psychology. I'd gotten a degree in psychology. I'd gotten to, gone to some grad school for psychology. But you just get so 
into the doctors know best and the doctors, they're the experts. They are going to tell me what my future is. And I really hadn't delved into what am I telling myself, the power of my mind. And the secret, I walked away from the secret with two very important things. Where I was putting my energy was creating cells. If I am telling myself I'm sick and I am expanding on this pain, putting all my energy into how bad I feel every day, I'm not giving my body an alternative, but to be sick and create unhealthy cells. And the second was gratitude. I had so much in my life to be grateful for. You know, I had my mom that was my best friend. I had a family, I had beautiful kids. I did have some friends that were wonderful. So really shifting my attention to gratitude and watching myself talk, it was horrendous. <laughs> and, you know, that energy to put all that energy in motion to saying, I'm not good enough. I'm not a good enough mom. I'm not a good enough daughter. And to feel that, that is not a healing place for my body. So, when I saw the movie The Secret, I said, you know what, I'm going to put off the doctor visits for a little while. And the essential ones, they, I was on a blood thinner at the time. I'll go to that because they have to monitor that. Other than that, I'm just going to dive into watching myself talk and really being mindful. Read a whole lot of Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, watched videos, Eckhart Tolle, Caroline Mace, and really dug deep into watching, being, you know, kind of being the observer of myself and being like, wow, I've been rotten to myself. <laughs> like, that is not a healing environment for my body. And how do I expect to feel better if that is what I am filling my mind and energy with? And I know that pain is distracting. That pain was very real. And it was attention grabbing. And it took sometimes all my might to be like, I'm not focusing on my legs. I'm focusing on my hands that don't feel pain. Mm -hmm. And I'm sending love to my hands. And I'm grateful for the years I've had of dance. And to really focus that energy a few times a day, especially morning and night, which were the roughest times a day, onto that gratitude, love, being grateful. I could read to my kids if, even if I couldn't run it after them like I wanted to, like really shifting my attention. And in three weeks, I was off of all pills and out of pain. That is an absolute remarkable story. So having battled illness for many years and, you know, having a, you know, not a wonderful a prognosis at the end of that, right, to be able to, to, to heal yourself, I, I think is phenomenal, especially in a, such a short period of time. Um, you know, and I, I absolutely agree with you that having gratitude for the good and what is wonderful in this moment can really help. And of course, you know, somebody who's experiencing severe severe pain, you know, it is it is a challenge, but it's certainly an effort that is is worth making. And as you start to incorporate that, I would imagine that it becomes a little easier, right? You know, having those new yes. thoughts, you know, may feel really foreign, especially for people who like yourself, have had those moments where you were horrible to yourself, that self talk, that negative chatter, that's, 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 um, you know, uh, obsessive, and it's, it's horrible, and it's allowed, and it's obnoxious can really, you know, overpower your day. And, and I get that as well. I mean, I, I suffered from, you know, a lot of negative self talk. And, you know, it's a process to, to, you know, start to unwind that. But I think it's so, so important to come to that point of having that awareness, because that's where you can really start to make the change when you start to listen to, hey, wait a second, who's this person? Why am I talking to myself <laughs> like this, right? You know, and then incorporating so, some, you know, options like gratitude. So it's interesting, you were talking about having gratitude for, you know, let's say your hands, you said that were, you know, obviously not in pain, and your and your legs were in pain. So did you ever focus gratitude on the painful parts of your body? Yes. And actually, that is something I recommend a lot with my clients, too, because we are damning those parts of our body all the time. And instead, again, that's not creating healthy cells. That's not creating, it's not catalyzing healing. But if we were to send them love and appreciation and, you know, my legs had helped me through many a dance recital and many a walk and many other things in my life. So really pouring that gratitude into them and recognizing that if something's out of balance, focusing negative attention isn't going to bring it back into balance. 
So really, how do we bring something back in balance? We do, love is the answer. You know, we know that it's challenging sometimes because if something is causing us pain, the natural reaction is to tense up and to be upset about that and fear and worry go there. And that is very natural. And it does take, you were saying that self-awareness to be like, hey, I am doing this to myself and I do deserve better. And I'm the only one that can grant that to myself. Mm, Yeah. And that self-love is really, truly important. And so many people have lived an entire lifetime of not valuing themselves and and having that very low self-worth. And maybe it's a, it's an environment, you know, growing up an environment, maybe, maybe you didn't have somebody tell you that you were worthy or that you were lovable and you just didn't have that feeling. And so it can be extremely foreign for so many people. So I would love to, um, you know, have your expertise. And if you can help people who maybe don't know how to give themselves self-love, you can provide us some some techniques. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break and then we'll come back. And I'd love to get your, you know, so some real practical tools that you are able to use that can be helpful to the listeners. So uh, stay with us, everyone. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back here on Saga 960 AM. You're listening to The Mindset Mentor. I'm Tanya Kohler. And my special guest today is Jenny Mannion. She is a, a wonderful um, you know, speaker, author. She is a highly sought after intuitive and also uh, a self-love activator. And yes, this is your moment to activate some self-love, to cultivate a life that you truly deserve. Stay with us. We'll be back. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the Mindset Mentor here on Saga 960 AM. Today, we're going to help to reawaken deep self-love so that you can really, truly experience profound healing. And oftentimes, people don't realize how connected those two aspects are, but it really is a game changer when we can get that into balance. So today, my special guest joining me is Jenny Mannion, and she is a speaker, an author, a highly sought after intuitive, and also a self love activator. She's been featured on so many uh, TV shows and, and you know radio programs and on a mission to help people heal through her own journey. Actually, it's such a profound story of healing. Having battled seven years of chronic debilitating illnesses, she was able to heal herself in three weeks. And I know you want to know how she did it. Well, stay tuned and you're going to find out. Let's continue the conversation. Jenny, it is such a pleasure having you on the show. And I'm really looking forward to to learning more about your techniques. Thank you so much, Tanya. I feel blessed to be here. Wow. Well, we're blessed to have you. So let's talk about, I mean, before we took a break, we were talking about, you know, you mentioned gratitude and how important that that was to incorporate, you know, into your life. And so how can we, what practical tools did you use to help you, you know, stay grateful and to incorporate gratitude on a daily basis? Gratitude is so multi-layered as well. There is gratitude. I was grateful for this soft bed I had to lay in because I was laying laying in bed an awful lot of the time. I was grateful that I could not work for a little while and had the support, financial help of my husband. I was, and then I had to start be, being grateful for myself. That was the hardest piece. And that is where I do start with clients because we usually beat ourselves up. That's so easy to do, but to be grateful for ourselves. You know what? I do show up as a good friend. I do. How many moms do you know that actually give themselves credit for making meals for their kids? Like none, you know, <laughs> but that is a major deal that you are taking the time to plan and grocery shop and cook and put that love and nurturing into that food. So there are so many things we do every day that we don't give ourselves credit for smiling at someone in the grocery store and making their day, letting someone ahead of us in traffic. We all do wonderful things for ourselves and for other people every day, but usually it's very uncomfortable to give ourselves that credit. So, you know, one of my favorite times to tell people to start a spiritual practice is in the shower because we're usually so in our heads. You know, I remember there were times, did I wash my hair today? I don't even remember. I'm so busy with my to-do list and everything else. I don't know where I've been the last 10 minutes. So why not start there? 
you know, what am I grateful for in this moment? Besides this hot, beautiful running water, you know, that's a good place to start. But what am I grateful for myself for today? Uh, you know, maybe even how can I do something where I'm grateful for myself today? Maybe I can take a walk for myself. Maybe I can do something that really nurtures myself. So really moving into that gratitude for self instead of, I know the beating up is still going to go in there. We're human, but allowing that it has to be balanced. There has to be some of that love too. And the beautiful part is when we do that consciously, that's such a stronger signal that we're sending than the unconscious chatter. Oh, you didn't do this. Oh, you're stupid. Like blah, blah, blah. They're the messages from the past that are just repeating themselves. And they don't bear as much weight if we balance it with those conscious, like, wow, you know, I am a good person. I really, I do care about people. I take care of my pet, you know, like these little things that we can give ourselves gratitude for, but that's empowering. That's really sending the message to ourselves that we love ourselves and we appreciate ourselves. And from that, there is always, when we give gratitude for ourselves, more appears to be grateful for. Mm, I love that you said that because I know there's a lot of people right now thinking, again, stuck in the negative chatter. There's nothing to be grateful for or there's nothing that I'm good at. You know, I always screw things up. That kind of negative Mm -hmm. self-talk, which again, remember that the the thoughts that fire together, you know, wire together. So we really want to override that. The people who are stuck in that, you know, they're you you have to look at it that there's always something to be grateful for. Yeah. You have so much value. You know, you are an extraordinary human, you know, on this planet. There's no there's nobody else on the planet like you. We're all individual and we all have beautiful gifts and talents that we should be grateful for. So if you're listening right now and you believe that there's nothing that you have to be grateful for for yourself, I want you to think again and just stay with it a little bit longer and you're going to find it. You're going to dig a little deeper sometimes when you're you're very much used to, you know, being really hard on yourself. You know, we are our own worst critics at times. And so if you just stay with it, I promise you it's there. There is so much to be grateful for. In fact, it's limitless. You can you can be grateful in every moment um, and find, find the beauty of who you are. And I, I love... Jenny, that you, you had that, you know, awareness and the experience and, you know, you, you, you mind that, you know, experience for yourself so that you could really, um, you know, change your health. And again, it's, 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 being aware of the body and being aware of the self is so important. And you touched earlier about how, you know, you had a diagnosis and, you know, you were told that, you know, this could cause blood clots. And then, you know, all of a sudden, three weeks later, you manifested these blood clots. And I think it's important for us to really recognize that we know our bodies best, right? And so we sometimes give up control, we give up hope to other people, and we just rely on them to help us. So let's talk a little bit about how for you, um, you were able to give yourself permission to take your power back in terms of healing. Yeah, I needed to. (laughs) It it, it is really, I want to go back to what you said, like people listening, give yourself credit for listening to the show. Something Mm -hmm. in you said, you know what, I can gain something from this. I can gain something from listening to Tanya. And Tanya brings on guests that do help people recognize the goodness in them. And there's a part of you that reached out to listen. So even that, give yourself gratitude for that. And yeah, it it was hard giving myself the power back. One of the tools that helped me the most was forgiveness and Ho'oponopono, which is the Hawaiian prayer. That's really simple. But that self-forgiveness is so important too, because even when I was starting to work on myself, my self-talk was like, hey, you're a psychology major. Why are you just coming up with this stuff now? Why have you been suffering so long? <laughs> like, even when you're doing good for yourself, there's still negative self-talk coming up. So, really, to accept yourself now means to forgive all of the past and to recognize that we're all doing the best we can from our state of consciousness. And that shifts and changes. And I do believe in divine perfect timing. And if you're finding the show now, this is because this is the perfect time for you to find the show. And forgiving yourself for not finding it three months ago or five years ago or whatever, this is the moment where your life can change. And every day is a new moment. And 
the prayer Ho'oponopono is so powerful because uh, Dr. Len popularized it in the late 1960s by going into a criminal psychiatric unit. And these people were not not getting better with talk therapy. So he said, let me take their charts and say this Hawaiian form of healing on their charts. And people were healed within weeks and months. And these were people that were like criminally insane were really getting better. And it's for simple sentences. And I always have clients begin with themselves because it is about ourselves. It's I love you because at soul level, we know we love ourselves. It's the brain that gets in the way. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I'm sorry for beating you up. I'm sorry for beating these negative messages over and over again. Please forgive me. Thank you. And saying those four sentences, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. They shift something inside you. Most of my clients will break down crying the first time they say that Mm. to themselves, like just absolving themselves of all this stuff, all the negative commentary that we've just kind of just bathed in for years or decades, like really absolving ourselves of that and knowing that life can begin now and it's okay. There is no judgment. You know, there is just, if we just surround ourselves with that love, we do begin to heal. Mm, Absolutely. Such powerful words um, indeed. And you know, what, what's so fascinating about that is that, you know, we all are certainly all connected. And I think this uh, is a great example, how this doctor was able to heal, um, you know, these, these, uh, you know, case studies by simply saying that prayer, and it wasn't directly to them. They weren't involved in that exchange, but that was something that his intention really was put out there. And that's really what caused the healing. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And we think about it when we think about someone else that maybe did us wrong. You know, we, we are putting out that energy, probably call them some names (laughs) over the years and given that so much energy, but Mm -hmm. recognizing hurt people, hurt people. I've heard horrific stories of abuse in, in within my practice, but whenever I ask, well, was the person that abused you abused? Yes, that is always the answer because that person has not healed from that. So they're repeating that pattern. So when we're saying that prayer for someone else, it might be very hard to picture that person that we feel caused us a lot of hurt and say, I love you. Picture them at soul level, picture them as a little kid. You know, if you're saying that to them, it really frees both of you because if we are blaming someone, we're hanging on to the past, we're giving that, we're still allowing that person to have power over us. It's really not going to move us forward. Anger is such a limiting emotion. Anger, blame, all of those things will eat us up inside. They will cause disease within us. Mm-hmm. So really freeing that other person and freeing us is, it just allows us to move forward. Yeah, I think that's so important because I think there's a, a huge misnomer when it comes to being able to forgive people who have hurt us um, in, on whatever level that that might be. Um, but I think many people believe that if they're going to forgive someone, that it makes that act okay. And it has nothing to do with that. It has actually nothing to do with the other person. It's really about yourself. And I think it's important for people to to understand that forgiveness is really, it's it's for you. It is not for the other person. And, you know, they may get the benefits out of that as well. However, that's just a good side effect, right? (laughs) (laughs) So for you, what was your, um, what was your realization with, with forgiveness? How did your life change by being able to forgive and let go of some of the past hurt and pain in your life? It really did give myself permission to move forward because I was so stuck in the the judgment, the criticizing myself of all the ways I didn't show up for seven years, all the ways I could have, would have, should have been a better mom or done this or done that. So really absolving myself of that and knowing that I believed all of those diagnoses and I took those in and those were, I really teach my clients not to say my cancer, my disease, because I know I owned every single one of those diseases and gave them permission to be me. You know, I really did allow that. So really forgiving myself because I didn't know any better. I didn't have the tools. The books I were reading, I was reading was all about how to 
cope with disease. It wasn't how to heal from disease. It was really yes. how to live with chronic illness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one book even said to have a funeral for my old self because I would never be that self again. That's not empowering. Mm -hmm. You know, so I did not know better. I thought I was doing the best I could. But to give myself that permission that, okay, th this has been a long seven years, <laughs> but I have the rest of my life ahead of me and life can begin right now. And it's only going to begin if I can forgive myself and not judge myself from that time about that time and the messages and, and being sick. Mm, so beautiful. You know, I love everything that you've said and it, you know, it's really, truly is key. So is there any other uh, technique or practice that you've utilized to move from self judgment to self realization? There are so many. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, Watching how you speak to yourself is important. And there are so many things that we can do within that gratitude. Yes, we can also set intentions. What and joy is such an important part. I know that busy moms, they put themselves last. They are last on the list. You know, everyone else comes first. Teachers, you know, healthcare workers, all of these people put themselves last. But really, if we when we experience joy, we are telling ourselves all is okay, that we deserve joy, that there are good things on this planet. You know, we're not delving into the, okay, the drudgery, here comes another day, I'm going to do the same thing and nothing good. I don't have time to make for myself. That's not true. We all have a little bit of time we can make for ourselves. The internet makes it so easy. You know, my, my boyfriend's taken like Italian lessons on Duolingo on his phone for the last two, two years, you know, 10 minutes a day. You know, you can do the things that you want to do that bring you joy, but you have to give yourself that permission. I love dancing. I love writing. Those are things that if there were not in my life, I would not be a happy person. <laughs> you know, I know that. So what brings you joy? You know, what people in your life bring you joy? Have you reached out to them? You know, sometimes we just get so, when we feel negative, a lot of times too, we don't want to reach out to people. We feel, oh, we'll bring them down. But that connection is so necessary. And just like we would love to help a friend that's in need, like to reach out, to be, to make yourself a little vulnerable and say, you know what, I've been going through a tough time, but friends can make you laugh. They can make you, you talk about something else. You remove yourself from the situation for a little while and you allow new possibilities to come in. So really asking yourself, what can I do to, today to bring myself joy? Maybe it's blasting music while you cook and dancing around the kitchen. You know, it can be something really simple. What are you listening to on your commute to work? Is it news? That's not going to uplift you. You know, why not put on an empowering podcast or music that makes you feel joyful? So really inviting in these little moments of joy is so important. Oh, I love that. And I think, you know, you're right where it's, we really need to give ourselves permission to have that. I think people get stuck in, if something bad has happened, then they're not allowed to be happy. Something bad can happen and whatever bad, you know, is for you, right? Whatever challenges we're going through that we deem to be bad because it's really perception. Um, but, you know, if we can just look at that and say, hey, that can still happen and I can still be happy as well, right? Instead of being locked into, you know, that, that negative mindset and feeling the physiology in the body, which absolutely will lead to, you know, disease. So really important to find that joy and find that bliss. And no matter how small it is, right, you can compound that and just stay with that feeling, which is lovely. So we're going to take a break here on the Mindset Mentor. You're listening to uh, Saga 960 AM. My guest today is Jenny Mannion, who is just a beautiful soul full of love and light and who is here to help us to, to reawaken deep self-love for profound healing. So stay with us and we'll continue with her story. Welcome back to the Mindset Mentor here on Saga 960 AM. Today, my special guest is Jenny Mannion. Jenny is a speaker, an author, a highly sought after intuitive, and also a self-love activator. So today, we're helping to, to activate some self-love within so that you can live a joy-filled life. And so many people, of course, are struggling with challenges. And, you know, Jenny has an incredible, remarkable story 
of being able to, um, you know, heal from cro chronic illness that she suffered with for seven years, debilitating chronic illness, and healed herself in three weeks. So I want to continue the conversation, say hello again to Jenny Mannion. It is an absolute pleasure having you here. Uh, so thank you. Thank you so much, Tanya. I'm having so much fun speaking with you. <laughs> uh, likewise. And, you know, I want to acknowledge you for your vulnerability, for opening up and letting us into your world. Um, I know that obviously having gone through health challenges, you know, can be devastating on so many levels and, and the fear. Uh, but also I want to talk about your, your mom. You had mentioned that your mother was your best friend. And I know your mother um, also battled illness. And I'd love to, to, to go there and you can share your story with your mother with us as well. Absolutely. And I will try to keep, <laughs> keep my uh, voice as I do that. I, I get um, it. Listen, you know, authenticity <laughs> is what we love. Whatever comes up, you go for it. <laughs> so my mom was definitely my best friend. She had me when she was 18. So very young at heart hippie like just love to have fun and laugh she got sick i guess it was in october a couple of years ago and actually january 1st 2020 she was diagnosed with stage four cancer that had spread to her brain mm -hmm. and lung cancer although she had never smoked that had spread to her brain and metastasized so Getting that diagnosis was horrendous and it, it, oh, it was so challenging on so many levels. I've worked with stage four cancer clients that I've seen heal mm -hmm. and be cancer free for years. So there's that little bit of hope. There's the, you know, just that fear. I can't lose you. You know, she, I talked to her every single morning for my whole life. She was my, you know, we were the only ones up at like 4.35 in the morning. So I'd talk every morning. She'd make me laugh, was my biggest cheerleader. Mm -hmm. So when she got sick as an only child, I became her sole caregiver. And luckily she lived five minutes away. And in the beginning she was fighting, you know, did, did honored her wishes. We did some spiritual work, but she also wanted to do radiation. And uh, she was actually qualified because of her genetics could didn't have to do regular chemo could take a chemo pill and those things had horrendous effects on her body they her hair fell out which that was the thing that she loved the most identified with um her she just became very weak she lost tons of weight she became kind of a shadow of her old self. She still had that humor, that biting humor sometimes, but it's very, very hard to be sole caregiver to see her become someone I didn't recognize physically anymore. Um, and to, but I felt blessed that I had that time to have the conversations with her that, you know, I think a sudden loss is even harder because you don't get that goodbye. You don't get that finality. And we did get five months of, talking about life. She told me stories about growing up that I had never known. It's hardship she had faced. And we got closer on, on other levels. You don't imagine helping your mom bathe. You don't imagine doing some of these things for her. But with all she did for me, it was like, that's the least I could do for you. It broke my heart. But at the same time, um, it felt so beautiful to give back to someone that had always given. She was a giver. And in that time, I did recognize that my stepdad that, that had passed six years before, she was mourning him a lot more than she let on. And she was ready to go. I mean, I think that was the biggest thing that came from the time together is she was only 69 when she passed, but I had grown up with her saying, I'm not getting old, Jen. Like, I don't want to get old. And for her, old began at 70 and she won at 69. Like, there were just all of these things that contributed to her being like, no, I'm, I'm kind of out of here, even though, you know, consciously did she manifest cancer? No, that would not have been, you know, her wish. Mm -hmm. It was five months of really, you know, a really hard time. When she went, I thought she was ready at hospice the last week, helping me because she was on medication. I was up basically for a week. Every hour, she'd need a different medication. So it, I was living there, taking care of her dog, taking care of her. And um, 
got to sit with her. There was one time I went in and I was playing her a lot of our favorite music. She grew up, you know, she, Leonard Cohen, Bob Dylan, playing all those songs. And one day I'd gone to do dishes, came in, she was listening to Leonard Cohen. She was just like, tears were pouring down her face. And she was like, Jenny, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. There are angels here. She's like, I've seen, you know, I saw my brother. I saw like, it's so beautiful. I'm okay. I'm ready. I'm okay. And so there were so many different moments that were heart wrenching, but yet beautiful too um for her and she had told me she's like you know when you get older there are more people on the other side than here Mm -hmm. that you love Mm -hmm. and she was ready as much as I didn't want her to be ready and as much as I did have that little talk with her like what about my kids don't you want to see who they wind up with and don't you want to see them graduate and she's like they're grown, Jen. They're they're great people, you know, and they're going to remember me and, you know, I'm still going to see them and watch over them. And Mm -hmm. so it was, it it was heartbreaking on a lot of levels, but at at the same time, we can't force anyone to stay that's ready to go. And that would not be honoring her to make her feel badly about that either. Mm -hmm. Especially with the work that I do. I, I know, you know, I'm pretty certain life doesn't end when we go. So, you know, there is that continuation. I made her to promise me to be a pain in the ass from the other side. <laughs> and she, she swore she would, you know, mm-hmm. and yeah, it was, it was very hard. And the grief that came with it, even though I knew she was going to pass, when she passed, I felt like a typhoon of like grief, of grief just came over me. Like, the person I love most in the world had gone, you know, and part of my heart left with it, with them. And yeah, it was pain like I've never experienced before. And the after effects of, she had told me she cleared out my, she started clearing out my stepdad stuff. She had not, you know, and when I asked her when she was like in bed the last couple of months, I'm starting to go through closets. I'm like, mom, what did you do? <laughs> There's still like everything here. Her response was, well, he could have taken the stuff with him then. (laughs) (laughs) There's that sense of humor that she has. Yeah. (laughs) So there was a huge grief and me hospice reached out to me for counseling. I said, yes, because even though I've counseled people for 15 years, this was a whole new level. And I did not know grief at this level. I've had friends pass. I've had loved Mm -hmm. ones pass not the same, not someone I talk to every day, not my biggest cheerleader, not someone that was a part of my heart. Mm -hmm. And the changes that have happened since then have been transformative in my life. Uh, One of the things is I have... I've been on this journey 15 years. I've tried every kind of meditation. I've tried to meditate every day. They come and go. But since January 1st of this year, I've had a daily meditation practice in place every morning, at least half an hour, sometimes up to two hours, because that was the time I talked to her. That was my check-in with her. So I do believe that her leaving was the catalyst for me being able to finally get this in place because it can bring me, it doesn't bring me the laughter, but it does bring me the peace that she brought me every morning. Yeah. And I think it's important to incorporate, you know, the gratitude in those moments of, you know, the life and the time that you had with her. Right? <sighs> Obviously, it's so devastating to lose somebody, you know, that you're that close to. Um, and, you know, it's it's a process. We need to grieve. We need to go through it and, you know, allow those feelings to come up because oftentimes we try to suppress it. And that's going to lead to, you know, a lot of other issues down the road. So to be able to process those emotions is key. And I I love that you um, had the knowledge to 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 seek help when it was offered to you, and I, and I think that's really important. So anybody who is listening, you know, who is going through something similar, you know, know that you can reach out to have people help. And being a caregiver is is such hard work, um, and oftentimes you absolutely neglect yourself. There's no self care. But if you can, you know, reach out to somebody who can help you. I mean, there's services for people to come in the home that can also help to give you a moment, to give you a reprieve so that you can have that solid constitution and feel better. And, and, you know, you can give more of yourself when you actually give yourself that downtime and some self-care to sort of recharge your batteries. 
um, you know, life can really throw us a curveball and things happen. They sometimes come out of nowhere. You know, in the case of your mom, you only had a few months. Some people, you know, have a little bit more time and some people it's immediate and there is no time at all. And so, you know, it's it can really throw us a huge, giant curveball. But we need to be able to define the tools that can help us in that moment. I think it's important to get present to the moment because oftentimes, you know, the fear sets in from thinking of, of what's going to happen next and, you know, about the future. And again, the kids, maybe they're, you know, that your loved one will not see your kids grow up into the next evolution of their lives. But if we can just get present to the moment and how can we better help ourselves in this moment, I think is, is a really great starting point to be able to get through the, the grieving process. Absolutely. And I love what you said about the love too. Like I noticing that the pain I was in was because of how much love I had and will always have for my mom. And that doesn't go away. And the infectious, like unconditional love that she gave to me is part of who I am. And that gratitude for that too. And knowing that not everyone has healthy relationships with their moms. You know, I was so blessed to have that in my life and really, yeah, just shifting that to gratitude and mm -hmm. to have her on this planet for 50 years of my life was a beautiful gift. And to, when you're grieving to really dive into that self-care to be, it allowed me to say no. Well, COVID was at the same time. So it gave me like a double excuse to say no, you know, mm -hmm. to things that I did not want to do, you know, and did not feel up to doing and really honoring myself at that deep level and not over committing myself. And even if I did commit to something, being okay with saying, you know what, I'm not up for this right now. And the best use of my time is to care for myself right now. Mm -hmm. And it does, it does take you, these challenges take you to new levels of self-care and self-awareness. Yeah, you know, it's through our greatest challenges in life that come our greatest gifts and the greatest lessons. And sometimes you got to dig a little deeper to find them, but they're yes. always there, right? And, you know, even in the most difficult moments. And unfortunately, we are out of time, Jenny. So I'd love for you to be able to uh, tell the listeners where they can find you to get more information. Absolutely. They can find me on my website, jennymannion.com, J-E-N-N-Y-M-A-N-N-I-O-N.com. I offer free gifts there for people and just love to connect and really help people connect with that self-love. I do feel like we are all limitless and in affirming that self-love and self-worth, we can really begin to live our best lives. Mm, beautiful words from the self-love activator. Absolutely. Uh, Jenny also has some great courses online. So, you know, have a look at her website. And I want to thank you so much, Jenny, for being here. And I acknowledge you for the commitment that you have to helping others heal through your own story of profound healing and uh, continue doing the great work that you're doing. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much, Tanya. I really appreciate you. All right, everyone. So that is your mindset workout for today. So remember that your mindset is like a muscle that needs to be strengthened and conditioned. So I really want you to focus on giving yourself a lot of love. Enjoy. Find the joy in your day because you deserve to have a beautiful, blissful life. Stay tuned and we will be back with more.